Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So in this video, we're going to do some more roof framing. In the last video, we were up above on the main roof. Now we're down to the garage, the double car, <laughs> and single car. We're going to set this ridge. It is just Noah and me at this point. Now you might be noticing this is not a filter applied to the lumber. You might be noticing it's somewhat faded. Look at those beams just to my right and down. Yep. We were busy doing those foundations. So it was back and forth. And well, we've got a little bit of sun bleaching and weathering. Don't worry about that. It does not affect things structurally at all. Okay, so getting into this video. We're gonna use the forklift to be our helping hand whenever possible. So instead of calculating ridge heights, as you can see, we already have our rafters. They've been pre-cut to the math. So either you can press the math on the rafters or you can calculate the ridge height and trust the math on that. We're gonna go ahead and trust the math on the rafters. I mean, it's all the same, right? If the, if the, if the triangle's perfect, then who cares if we adjust the vertical, or if we calculate the vertical leg or the diagonal leg, the hypotenuse or the rafter itself. Okay, so Noah is in the machine. He is forklift certified and he is nice and gentle with the controls. My job is to try and line up the ridge as best I can with that far rafter. Remember in a previous video, I mentioned how the back of this house, all the way through, that's our plane that the rafters start from. You can see in the great room that they go up to a wall and then from that wall up to the ridge. Well, they're gonna follow that same plane all the way to where the camera is sitting on this other ridge wall. So I'm going back and forth, my little finger pinch, that's boom in, that just makes the signals one-handed. I have to basically get the ridge close, but not perfect. I don't care about perfect at this point. I'm just gonna get it close and a little low because we can lift it. It's only an inch and three quarter by 14 LVL. It's not real heavy. So we set one rafter to the back and marked it. That matches the existing rafter plane. Now we're just gonna tack this one to the wall, even with the top of the ridge. Pretty simple, right? No rocket science there. Or as our engineer says, it's not rocket surgery. Then, oh, and by the way, the third law, uh, Timmy's third law of thermodynamics is that the more nails you put into something, the more likely it is to be wrong. So everything gets tacked with a couple of nails because I don't mind pulling a couple nails, but I don't want to pull a hundred nails. So same thing, Noah's going to hold this up and I'm going to tack the top. Now a couple things came up that we ended up fighting. One, the LVL was cupped. Two, because the rafters were in the sun and got weathered, some of these heel cuts opened up a little bit. I know that they were cut perfect because we've never had this happen before and the only thing that I can think of is the weather. It's possible that myself or Kyle didn't do a good job cutting them, but it seems like after all these years that's highly unlikely, right? <laughs> so we were able to get the cup out of that LVL. What I ended up doing was putting a 5 inch Simpson Strong Tie SDWS timber screw right through it and man it pulled it flat. Should have got footage of that, didn't really know it would work. It was awesome. So anyway, we've got the rafter that Noah just helped me, and we're going back from the um, from the gable end. So see the edge of that LVL? That aligns with the gable. But it was just easier for me to go one rafter back. Now Noah's just going to put a couple of nails in this while I hold it, and then we're going to go eyeball it at the plates and make whatever adjustments we need. We do want the ridge level. So this is the basic process for getting this ridge set. Of course, once it's set, then we're gonna go in the middle. Okay, so now we're too high. The rafters are in at the plates. So I'm just gonna go ahead and look how gentle Noah is with the controls. I could not be happier with this. Nice and slow. Don't want anything herky-jerky. Nice and smooth on the controls. It helps too if you keep the, at least in this machine, it's a 2002. It helps to keep it rev. It doesn't have to be like red line, but just keep it rev. Keep pressure in the pumps. Yeah. So work harder. No, work smarter and not harder. Okay, now I'm going to check it with the level before we really start rolling. All right. Let's do a Dr. Deck style uh, update video. So two months ago when we were here framing, and then we did the foundations, 
We have rafters from the glue lamb and from the wall that go up to the two-story wall you can see there. They split, they're blocked, and then shorty rafters from there to the ridge. Noah and I, well, we're pretty smart guys sometimes. We decided that we're just gonna frame this roof by setting the rafters, but holding the ridge with the forklift. So that's what he's down there. You know, can't leave it unattended. Anyway, so we set the first two rafters back because one of these is gonna land on the glue lamp on each side. So anyway, set, the, set those two backwards. So we're gonna get to some roof framing. We're going kind of slow. We're just taking care of every detail we can think of as we go, because we're cool like that. Happy Monday, everybody. Yeah, it was right on the money. Go figure. Uh, usually there's an adjustment to be made. Once that step is completed and we're satisfied, then we're gonna go ahead and either brace or set a couple of rafters in the middle to lock the ridge in straight. Now it all depends on how long the ridge is, how many you need to do. This ridge actually was pretty straight. So we just put one in the middle on opposite sides, so two, two total. That kept it straight. Then I went ahead and you notice I have it, um, I have it posted every six feet. That's what our engineer called out for. And what we were trying to do was just do everything we could think of as we went, because I really don't want to get up there. And Noah, he's new, so he's learning this stuff. So it's like, let's just be nice and systematic. Some of the stuff I would save normally so that we were undercover, but we were heading into summertime and let's just do it as we go. As I showed in the last video, if these are all the same blocks, two by six blocks with a six inch notch. They're beveled to meet the uh, slope of the roof. Our engineer wants the roof sheathing to be nailed into the bird blocks at the eaves, which are also fastened to the plates that transfers your shear loads through the walls. But the roof diaphragm needs to be nailed along its edges at the ridge. Okay, that's just for our, our engineering. So that's what we do. Ripping it with the table saw is easy. You saw that in a previous video, ripping it with the bevel not really any harder, <laughs> not harder at all. So the order is, Noah is gonna hand me the rafter, I'm gonna nail it in, I'm gonna nail it to the block and the ridge, he's gonna hand me a block, I'm gonna nail the block in. This time we're flush with the top of the LVL, so our air is coming through those notches. Now from here it doesn't look like very much, but it is plenty of ventilation. Every uh, bird block bay is vented, and then of course we've got our ridge vent. We regularly get back up into these attics, before the house sells, we'll get up, double check things, and you can feel the air moving. So our climate zone is quite forgiving. You can see we're just being systematic, working our way through. The ridge is posted nice and straight onto that glue lamb that carries the ceiling joist down below. Now that the front is on, and I, and I should mention this, some people are of the opinion that you just hop back and forth, maybe two rafters at a time. We've been doing this a long time, and I find that once the ridge is straight, we can go ahead and just stack one whole side. Now, obviously that depends on the length. In this case, I think it was only what, 20 feet, 22 feet long, something like that, I, I don't remember. Two foot on center of the rafters so we can count them when we're done. I don't really care, <laughs> I don't know if you care. You can see the rafters in the background are a little aged. Same with the top plates on the rake wall on the bottom left. Again, none of that matters. One thing too is if we're not perfectly straight on the ridge, we still have some adjustment because we haven't nailed anything at the glue lamb on the bottom left, and we haven't nailed anything at the plates except for the ones that are tacked. So again, kind of the bare minimum until you can make sure things are gonna stay straight, et cetera, et cetera. I'm using the Passload XP nailer for all this stuff. I didn't wanna deal with a hose. You can also see at the bottom, I have a string line. It's a little hard to see there, but it planes from the rafters that were already set all the way to the rake wall. And if we need to make some adjustments, we really want this plane to be good, we can eyeball all of those off the string. So it's consistent at the plates and at the beam, and we're gonna guarantee it's consistent at the top because before we really started rolling, we made sure that the ridge was level, that it planed with the existing section of roof, and we checked it with the string against the rake wall. Definitely do that. <laughs> I've gotten myself into some trouble by not checking because I just wanna get them up and then the fact is, we're framing all these rake walls. Remember on the ground, you saw in an early, early video in this series, that garage rake wall was one of the very first walls framed. So since it's in place, we can still make the roof plane out to it if we need to. But the cleaner you frame to begin with, the less of that adjustment you have to do. There's another look, bottom left of the string line. So you can see the rafter sits on the plate. The tail is about a quarter short of the soffit. There's our glue lamb that we had set in a previous video. Our rafters set in and plane to that. 
So again, not rocket science, but there's a definite order to this. And if you get out of order, well, it can just make your life harder. Sometimes, not always. Okay, here's a Tiny Tips Tuesday for you. Since we have two ridge heights, one will be from here coming back to my right. So it's upper ridge, this ridge, and then lower ridge. Just set a rafter and scribe it. Hey, no, go over there and scribe the side of that. Exactly. Now we know where the ridge goes. Of course, on this side, we do already know where it goes. It goes right in the uh, pocket there. So again, we could set it to the mast, but the rafters have already been cut to the mast. This is how we would do trusses too. So the back needs to be our good plane, right? It's gonna be all the way across the house. The front, it's interrupted, it's only 12 feet. So if, if something needed to be off, make it off on the front, That it, no one will ever see that, and it's not an issue. As long as the roof is flat, the fascia is level, right? So same thing, we went ahead, this was a short ridge, so we stacked the entire back, we watched on the string lines, and now it's time to just do the front. Everything's locked in. Now we can be a little bit more mindless about it. Now having said that, always watch your layout. We always tend to grow, even if we cut our blocks 22 and 7 16 because of nail heads or thickness of material or when things get wet, etc. You'll notice too, and I'm going to be totally open about this, here's another set of rafters where I needed to trim those plum cuts because they hit, I think they shrunk, shrank? I think they shrink a bit across the grain. So that 29 degree became like a 31 degree angle. So it was just like a quarter of an inch, but I didn't, I want the heels resting against the LDL. Even though, as you're gonna see here in just a couple minutes, that really doesn't matter structurally because we're gonna have collar ties, but we want it to look pretty, not just for us, not just for you or the inspector, but it really should be, it should be right. Right? Right. Plum cuts should be fully bearing on the ridge. Oh, and I should mention one other thing. I, I get this comment on Instagram all the time. So see, there's, I needed to trim a block, set the depth trim in place. People are like, why are you using such a deep LVL ridge? And we don't have snow loads. The reason is, I think a nine and a half inch is spec, but I need a 14 inch because my heels have to be fully bearing. And the heel is the short point of the plumb cut on the rafter where it meets the ridge. Okay, a lot of words, a lot of words, too many words, but you can see I have full bearing on the heel. That's what we want, what the inspector's gonna look for. So let's just do it. Unfortunately, you do have to upsize the ridge. So a little extra cost. The other alternative is to lower the ridge to the heel and then just let your rafters have a ton of ventilation over the top. And we've done that as well too. Again, notice that the plates, I mean, it looks like I, it looks like I in post, I colorized the rake wall and the plates <laughs> to be like desaturated in black and white. Nope, they just got weathered, sun bleached. Again, it does not matter at all, but it doesn't look real pretty. So just pretend like, pretend like it's, these are not the droids you're looking for, but I mind. What I like to do is find dead center and lay out for both sides of the ridge. Just makes it a little easier for me to line everything up. So I'm installing collar ties because even a short guy like me can reach them at this point. Collar ties go in the upper third, rafter ties go in the lower third. I'm gonna to link to an article below because a lot of people argue about this. That is the technical definition. So collar ties keep the roof from opening. I'm gonna set the first one level on each end and then I'll snap lines and I'll show you the rest of that process. What collar ties are designed to do is as wind hits, let's say the left side of that roof, that's the windward side, then that means that the back side of the roof becomes the leeward and lift is created like an airplane wing. So in order to keep your rafters from opening in extremely high winds, we have collar ties. Now they can't go up because we've got a two by six underneath the ridge. And that locks the entire assembly together at the ridge. Over the years, I've found this to be the quickest way to install these. Get the first two in level, snap a line where they meet the rafters. And at that point, now you can just install collar ties. Some people might use a level on each one of them, especially if they're butting them up to the ridge. 
But that just that requires an extra pair of hands. It requires a level. There's really no reason for that. We're going to be level, and we're going to plane because we matched those first two. Now, one thing you could do is you could have dropped them each like a quarter or a half at each end, just in case your two by sixes weren't consistent. But since mine were all stacked together, and just generally speaking, our two by sixes here are always exactly five and a half. So I'm just gonna line up these marks, eyeball it, and then on this side, I'm looking for the snap line, and it should be the same on that side. Four nails per. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm lining up either side of the ridge, just eyeballing it through. I'm gonna adjust my left side until I'm at the line. Should also be at the line. Four nails. And I like to space them out. And on that note, installing collar ties, we're just trying to be systematic. Let's do it while we're there. That's going to conclude this video. So thank you everybody for watching. The next video, we're going to get into some fall protection and roof sheathing. And may, yeah. And then, the, then we'll, yeah, I think then we'll do one more video after that. And that's on the back roof that needs to be overframed. I'll show you how we do that. And it's a little unorthodox, but I got some pretty decent footage. So we'll go ahead and make that video. And I think that's it. Stay safe, everybody. Remember, I'm not showing you the best way or what I think you should do. I'm just showing you currently the way that works well for us. But hey, we're always open to new ideas. Thank you for watching, everybody.